So I'm going to be demonstrating the sketching project level one for observation. I'm going to start with this penguin. I give you guys three very clean linear drawings of a penguin, an arm, and a VR girl that I made up. And your assignment was to sketch it out with loose, confident lines. The goal for this isn't to get clean lines and to get your proportions correct. It's to start practicing to be okay with things being a little bit messy and getting yourself into the mindset of exploring on the page. It takes practice to just to get your mind into that mode. We kind of have this anxiety about every line being correct and that can keep that can hold us back from exploring. Okay, so the penguin. When I start sketching, I usually start in an area that I feel the most confident with or a large shape. Um, there's no really any major rules I follow. But for this one, I'm looking at, I mean, the body shape is so large and simple that I feel like I need to place that on the page. And it, because it's also such a simple shape, I feel confident that I could probably put that in there correctly. So I will start with that big body shape. There is a little bit of complexity in there as we get up to the kind of the neck and the head. Seems like there are some separate volumes, but from where you see like that bump on the chest all the way down to the belly and, and, the, and the tail, it just seems like there's a big long oval. So I'm going to start with that. And again, I'm not too worried about proportion. I just kind of want to get used to this ability to sketch, this mindset of sketching. I'm starting very light. You guys are probably having a hard time seeing what I'm what I'm drawing here. I'll try to do a little bit darker very quickly here. But notice I'm actually even just following through to the other side because I'm imagining just a simple shape. I'm not copying the lines, I'm copying the idea. I'm going to be looking for rhythms. Um, that's going to be much more clear with the hand and the, the VR girl. Okay, so I got this down. Then let's see, maybe get the tail in here coming off. It's a pretty small tail. See how in the tail you see these individual little feathers, I guess? Um, I'm not going to try to get all of those. Instead, I'm going to get the rhythm of all that down here. Because Again, I'm just trying to get the big idea. I'm sketching. If I was actually sketching a penguin and I'm looking at a photograph with way more detail than this drawing, or I'm drawing from life where I have a real penguin in front of me that's moving, or even if I'm just drawing from imagination, I'm not going to start with the little feathers. I need to get the big idea down first. And then if I want, I can start adding details. All right. So now this second little shape on here for the neck, I'm seeing it kind of like this. Kind of an interesting way it's connecting through here. And by the way, it is totally fine to use straight lines in this. You'll see me probably for most of this using my shoulder to kind of get C curves and flowy, you know, gestural lines. Um, but sometimes when you see just like a very structural element, it's totally fine to add a straight line in there or a corner, you know, a sharp a zigzaggy area where you're seeing a lot of tension, that's totally fine. It's not like, it's not wrong to do that. We're not only looking for flowiness. We are looking for simplicity in our lines, but sometimes you do need to add the straights. Like in this peak, see how I'm, I'm just trying to find the angle there. That's a loose, sketchy line too, a straight angle across. And then even maybe a little bit here. Because there, this is a hard surface. Maybe that's why I'm like just kind of gravitating towards straights in the beak is because I'm naturally feeling like that is a hard element. Everything else is a soft body. And I, when I combine these straights with these rounds, 
it makes this feel like a hard thing and everything else feel like a soft thing. I feel like I'm not leaving enough space for the head. It's definitely more than half of this shape is the head and less than half is the beak. So adjust that. When you stay loose and light, you could very easily adjust your lines. Just a little placeholder for the eye. I'm not going to get into that detail yet until I get the other bigger shapes in there. That is kind of one, not rule, but guideline I follow most of the time is that I don't want to get into small shapes too much before getting all of my big shapes in. Let's see, maybe I'm taking a second pass through this. I feel like maybe I need to make it a little wider. But I'm also kind of just darkening, committing a little bit more. But yeah, I, I do feel like I need to push this out. And then this wing comes down really far, actually. Like, all the way down here. See how I'm trying to look for the flow of this wing, not all of these subtle waves that I'm seeing in there. It's getting that nice combination of straight, straight, a little curve this way, curve this way. This straight merges into an S curve this way. Maybe a little straight in here to kind of cap it off. Um, no symmetry in that. I'm trying to break it up, make this a more dynamic, interesting shape. What I mean by that is there's no symmetry in this top part or this bottom part. Everything is a little bit angled and there's the thick to thin is uh, different on both sides. Like see how this is higher up than this. This gets thicker. If there's a corner, this gets thicker and it's a soft transition. Um, so this is showing some structure, this is showing gesture. Essentially, I'm trying to avoid doing this. You know, that this is what our brain would want to do in that shape. And I am looking for how is that different from this. And this is a little bit higher up. And I don't mind drawing like little guidelines like that when I'm comparing one side to another. I'm just drawing as I think. These are thinking lines. When you're sketching, a lot of your lines are just thinking lines. They're not meant to be in the final drawing.
I'm obviously not using my shoulder to pull this little line here, but I'm using my elbow. Like I, my whole forearm is doing this because I'm trying to just get a very gestural tapered stroke in there. You can feel that my arm was moving. It, like each line you put down is a record of the motion of your arm. And you know, there, there are some uh, proportional errors in my sketch. Um, I'm seeing them like, for some reason, this negative shape is totally different, um, but it's okay. Like, for example, if I was drawing from life, like if this penguin was just kind of standing there, I would not try to get that kind of accuracy where I'm like looking for negative shapes. I'm just trying to make sure that the mass of this penguin and the character of the penguin is captured in my drawing. I'm trying to recreate that with this exercise for you guys without actually making you like go to the zoo, which we might do towards the end of the course. You know, something along those lines. Oh, I, <laughs> I see what I did wrong. I, I did not include this, uh, I guess like that little butt shape that kind of comes down, uh, which yeah, you know what, I'll put it in. That's a, a very easy addition. So right here. Just a little volume that comes in. Yeah. Okay. Now let's come in in here and just add a few little details. Still, I, I want to stay in that loose state. I don't want to start putting in too many details with my, my fingers and just start drawing little outlines. I want to stay loose but still get a little more information in there about like the brow because I'm seeing nice S-curve rhythm like kind of like that. So I kind of like it. Yeah. Adjusting my lines, which is the whole purpose of this. It's okay to adjust things to improve the shape or uh, fix proportions, whatever it is, it's okay to adjust. That's why we're using this type of line because we are literally searching. Okay, just taking a second look, making sure I didn't miss anything. Just darkening a few lines here to make it more clear of what what I found. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy with it. It's a good sketch. At this point, I would move on, do another one. Depends on what the purpose of this drawing would be. If I could maybe go over it with a black pencil and clean it up or just move on to another one, which I will do. Let's move on to the hand. So hands are tough. Uh, if you struggled with it, it's fine. Uh, hands are tough for 
even professional artists who have been drawing hands for decades. <laughs> they're, it's like they're like faces, you know, they, they're always a challenge. But they're fun because when you get them right, it is very rewarding. And by the way, I'm, you notice I'm using a red pencil. I mentioned in the pencils video that I like red pencils. I like colored pencils for sketching. It gets me in the sketching mode and it helps me stay in the sketching mode, in that exploration mode. Because that it's that color. I think that visual cue of the red color helps my brain just kind of stay locked in to not just jump to details, not try to get like a finished polished drawing in there. It just makes me stay in the mode of, hey, I'm just sketching. I'm just trying to figure out things. I'm problem solving. Um, and I'm not concerned about it looking clean and perfect. You might be the same way. It might help you do that. Um, but in no way is this necessary for you to do the project. You could do it in a graphite pencil as well. It just helps me. So that's why I'm doing it. All right. So rhythms are going to be huge. And I mentioned it in the penguin with hands and really the body. There's so many rhythms. And I mentioned rhythms in the line episode as well, where rhythms are pretty much just like connecting lines through many things from the forearm and into the wrist you can kind of find this curve and this might not be right i might need to adjust this but i'm just going to start you find this sweeping curve through here and then down into that index finger right here that's kind of the flow that i see that's what i look for is these big ideas first um and then Get the hand. I don't want to make the hand too big because then I won't have room for like the fingers and so I'm just going to err on the safe side and just keep it small. It's really nice sweep across here. It's actually, I almost did what I was about to say the tendency is, uh, and I caught myself as I was about to say it, is that the tendency for everyone is gonna be to just straighten that out, that sweeping curve of the thumb. But if you look at it, it starts going downward and then it actually points up. <laughs> not straight up, but it's not horizontal here. It starts to go upward. And I almost just kind of did something like this. The only thing is I, I think I just made that sweep too large. Uh, that's all right. Just same sweep, just smaller. Okay, I'm going to stay loose. I'm, I'm, sure I'm starting to get a little too much into that perfectionist mindset. I don't know why. But part of this exercise is just learning to train your brain to stay in that mode. All of this is a mental exercise. And that might be... Notice I'm I'm not drawing contours. I'm trying to just find the big sweeps that capture the idea of what the fingers are doing. Like for example, I'm seeing that the skin is being pulled by these two middle fingers. It's being pulled up. And then it comes back around and you can see it's being pulled back this way. And so I'm looking for that rhythm between that and making sure I capture that correctly. Starting to feel like maybe I am making the whole thing a little too wide, and that's okay. 
I just draw some other sketchy lines here. Basically where the hand was originally where I put it. I'm gonna keep going for a little longer because it might turn around, but so far I'm not liking it. All right. Now maybe a straight in here. Yes. Can group these two together? They are kind of one form. They flow together at least. I'm starting to feel like this is getting dull. Let's sharpen it a little bit. Yeah, there are some crisper lines. And now after I've found all these rhythms across the big forms, now I can start getting into some of these more smaller wrinkles in the hand, the, the skin being pulled, the overlaps of the skin. There's a lot of expression in the way the skin creases and the, the pattern that you can find in there. Uh, a, a lot of the energy of the hand is captured through the way the skin is creasing. Cross contour lines. It's another type of line that I mentioned in the intro to lines. And they're pretty useful in these two fingers coming at us because they're showing us this round cylinder form. Make sure this one's a little off. Just be a little higher up like this.
And I'm sensing that my proportions are off in some of these areas. I'm not quite sure where because I haven't really been measuring. You know, if I really wanted to get accuracy with this, I would have spent maybe a, an additional five minutes in the beginning just kind of measuring, getting my angles correct. But that would get my mind out of the sketching mode and more into measuring mode. It, it really is a different mindset. It's less, much less exploration when you're in measuring mode. And so, once you kind of train your mind to be in both of those, you could combine the two. It's not like you have to be strictly in one or the other. You can be in kind of a little hybrid mode. You know, it depends on how good you get with controlling your state of mind. Uh, another way is you can, you know, start with one and then switch to another. The whole point though is that like right now, we're just training. We're not trying to get good drawings. We're just trying to improve our ability to draw good drawings. And a lot of that is going to involve exercises like this that just kind of target a very specific skill to improve on. I feel like I'm looking straight down at these fingers and so I'm trying to I'm trying to like use cross contour lines to describe this form but that's not gonna happen because we're looking straight at it so the cross contour is just like a straight line. In the bottom of these fingers right here, these would have cross contour lines. So we could kind of curve these a little bit to describe what's going on. Here's a really good example of what I'm talking about with our goal here. When I look at the photo, I'm seeing so much activity in this contour of all the little creases coming in and out. And if I tried to copy that from the beginning, just kind of go in there and draw that outline, I would be completely missing the point of this exercise, which is to find the big idea. And that is not the big idea. The big idea is the, the expression of the hand, the pose of the hand. And a lot of time to capture the pose of the hand, you have to find rhythms between the joints. In our body, the joints are what moves everything and what we pose ourselves with. And so, Finding the rhythm between all those shows the motion between all the joints. And so, you can see that in here, I'm just trying to find this S curve as the pinky comes at us. And then here, this is kind of flowing back up. And this in here, I put that there just so that it doesn't look like just like a simple sausage. And also, you know, a place for me to add a little bit of overlap to show depth. And that might be a little bit of, a, of an advanced concept for you right now, but that is what I was thinking. Fortunately, a lot of things might just be a little early, but that doesn't mean I, want, I don't want to introduce you guys to the ideas of the things I'm thinking about. I think it's still beneficial to kind of look ahead at what's to come. Probably need to move this a little bit. These wrinkles here are great cross contour lines. I mean, I can even just kind of continue them a little further than what I'm seeing in this linear drawing. If this was a photograph or a real arm in front of me, I would see a lot more stuff in here, half tones and sh little shadows that indicate a rounded form. Elbow, great opportunity for some straights. Make sure it's flowing through to the wrist because that's the same bone.
make a little adjustment to this knuckle. Bring it in a little bit. There we go. And then maybe finally get these nails in there. Okay, I'm happy with this. Let's move on to the VR girl. So this one is a little more cartoony, a lot more cartoony. So it's not like we need to get our proportions straight and get our anatomy right, like with the hand. Um, but it's a full body pose, so it might be a little bit challenging. But don't worry if you change the pose a little bit or you change the proportions a little bit. Again, this is just an exercise in sketching lines. So, I'm just gonna start sketching. We got the head. Really just the hair shape. And then kind of the sweep across here, and then the jawline. Just got a very square jaw. See really big statements here in all of the lines that I'm starting with. Maybe a center line. It's a very common thing to do when you're drawing a face is to just find a center line. It's a helpful guideline to put features on just because the face is symmetrical and so a lot of things fall on that center line. It's a very helpful construction line. And then that helps in place the nose, the mouth. So I'm not being too strict, I'm not outlining the mouth. I'm just kind of getting some gestural kind of big sweeps across there. Ear. And then from here, maybe find just like a curve for the body. That might help me place the shapes. It's like lots of energy kind of going this way, pulling. She's leaning back, so I want to make sure I don't go for what our mind is going to tend to want to do, is to make her more vertical. When you know what your mind is going to want to do and you just kind of get used to looking for those things to avoid them, you just start getting good at avoiding them by, by doing things like that. But sometimes it's going to take a lot of painful moments of doing a full drawing, take, you know, spending an hour on it, and then realizing you just did that thing where you just made the body vertical. And then it's like, oh, I got to redo all that. And enough of those moments kind of solidify that in your mind to, you know, get into the habit of not doing that, of trying to avoid it. It's like avoiding pain. <laughs> Our brain is really good at trying to avoid pain. So two things here, like you have the rhythm of the shoulder, right? Uh, and then you have arms going from the shoulder. Another acceptable solution uh, would have been to kind of get just like one sweeping C curve across there. It's totally fine too. And I'm really not going to concern myself with the proportions of this. If I make her taller or shorter or make this box on her ribs bigger or rounder, I really don't care. This is kind of a character design exploration. And I want to stay true to what, you know, the purpose of a, doing a sketch like that would be. Okay, so the body kind of flowing this way. No, I don't see that body. I don't see much going on in there because that hand is covering a lot of it, but I do want to feel it. I'm not drawing the contour lines that I'm seeing there. I'm drawing, again, the idea and trying to visualize what I'm drawing is very helpful. If you did this assignment 
and you didn't think about the body underneath, all you thought about was the line, that's probably a sign that you're not thinking enough about the subject that you're drawing. Instead, you're thinking about the lines that you're seeing. That might just be a little clue in that you might need to try to train your brain to go into that different mode. Because when you're exploring, like if you were to draw from imagination, like what the level two people are doing, you're not copying lines at all. There are no lines that you're looking at. You have to be able to visualize. And so, this kind of in between where we, we are looking at something, but we're also trying to visualize something that is not actually there. But there's a lot of clues to where it would be, right? So, it's kind of a mini step towards that mentality. Okay, you got the belt, maybe a little higher up, like that. Okay, big fun boots or robot boots. I don't know what they are. I mean, this girl is playing some VR game, but she's got these giant robot boots. I don't know why. <laughs> There's not much meaning or reason to what I did here. It was just an exploration of a concept. Finding the flow between the legs. And then, let's see, big sweeping curves across here. So, we got something like this. And now, I just caught myself, I was not imagining the whole thing. I'm looking at the edge of this boot thing here and I was not imagining the whole thing which is wrong. I want to look at my page and try to imagine where it's going to go and then and sketch it in, kind of follow that image that I have in my mind. That's going to allow me to find it much more clearly or much more accurately even. This part here might be one of the most challenging parts for you guys um, in this drawing because you have two hard surface forms in here that are actually rotating and they're in perspective and we haven't done perspective yet. And so you're going to probably mess up the effect of a box in this and that's totally fine. As long as you kind of capture the gesture of what's happening, I'll be happy. I'll say you pass. You'll get your imaginary points. But basically, like, you have this form here, which is just a tapering box. It gets thinner. And then you have this form going up a little. So she's lifting her heel, but her toes are staying flatter on the ground. So you have this angle, and then you have this angle. Okay. That was a fun one. Move on to the other side. So you got flowing this way. See so how I'm finding the flow from here to here. And then visualizing that big mass here. Can even start with an S curve in this area. Uh, even though I got three straight lines, you could start like this.
So I started with just the curves and finding the rhythms between all of these things. I'm not thinking of a, the perspective. And then I can start adding a few little key corners and it just like suddenly becomes a hard surface. Like straight line there, straight line there and there. It's like, oh, suddenly it's sharp and hard. There you go. I just want to darken some of these. Not necessarily because I want them darker, but because I know it might be hard for you guys to see some of these lines. When you're sketching, you don't have to make things dark. And especially in like a red pencil, kind of searching exploration mode. Again, I've mentioned this a few times, I think this is a great example of a, a place where I'm adding a corner on one side to show structure and a very simple curve on the other side to show motion, gesture. This is a very, very basic concept that is very powerful and is going to be repeating everywhere. You know, in a lot of uh, organic things that you draw, you're gonna see that kind of thing. You can start with that hand as just like a, a ball. That's probably what I would do if I was drawing this from imagination. I would just kind of get a placeholder in there and then maybe try to figure out the expression of the fingers. But first it's like, well, there's a, a remote control <laughs> that look, looks kind of like a flashlight or a microphone in there and so I, I have like the hole in her hand that that goes into and then the vertical part. If it makes it easier, every box you draw can start with a cylinder. Like this box that's kind of around her wrist, I can start with these ellipses, basically a, a cylinder, and then I can add planes on it on top. And it, visualizing that box becomes a little bit easier. We'll get to that in perspective. <laughs> Again, just a little preview of what's to come. Okay, and then this drawing, the, the outline doesn't really have a very defined hand. So you can also kind of just sketch it in very rough. Okay. Kind of imagining that arm behind that giant glove. Kind of goes in, her hand goes into it, and then there's this huge thing. Huge glove that kind of goes out this way. Just getting the big, big shape first.
You don't even need to draw all these fingers. Just kind of the big idea of the big group of them is good enough for a little sketch like this. Oh, the thumb. Yeah. Same thing for the thumb, just big, big sweeping shapes, just looking for the gesture. Like that. I know it's a robot finger. And so maybe just a few little planes here and there. Give that away. Same with that. And I'm actually not concerned with any of these little details that I put in here. I actually put that in there to kind of try to throw you guys off a little bit to see how much emphasis you put on those details versus how much emphasis do you put on the big sweeping curves, the the idea of what the pose is. So that was intentionally there to kind of test you guys. I'm probably not even gonna put them in. They, they really don't matter for a sketch like this. Okay, let's come in here, finish off the head, because I noticed I forgot about this top part that wraps around her head. Big sweeps. And darken just a few few lines that are a little cleaner that kind of make this a little bit more clear of what's happening. Like the expression of the mouth is is kind of important here. It's probably the focal point of this. And so I just wanted to make it darker. There's the chords. Another opportunity for, for gestural sketchy lines. And I think finally the, the only thing left is this hanging ball thing. And uh, where do I put it? Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna cut it off actually. Have it overlap a little bit. Because I don't want it to be behind her. You know, she's looking at it in front of her. If I put it over here, it might be too high up. Yeah, I think even though I'm, I'm not showing you guys how to construct this, it, it just looks better here. And honestly, it's just a bunch of ellipses. So there's really not much to show. So if you've been doing your mushroom warm-ups, that would be very helpful in this. Just a little indication of it here. Okay, so that is it. I hope that this gave you more clarity as to what this project was about. Um, after watching this, I suspect that you probably might want to redo yours and that is totally okay. Uh, you don't have to redo the exact same drawings. You can just find some more photos of any, really anything and try to sketch it out. Like these projects that I give you are just like, they're ideas for you of what you should be doing or what you could be doing to keep practicing the same concepts. They're not intended to be the only thing you do for this. You know, it's, it's a really good, get good at sketching. You got to do a lot more sketching than just these three drawings that I gave you are assigned to you. Um, so keep going. Like if there's anything you saw in this demo that you're like, oh, I didn't do that or that, oh, man, I want to try getting into that mindset, whatever it is. You heard me say something that gave you some kind of clarity on what, what to do. Go ahead and do it right now, but make it fun for yourself. You know, doing the same thing over might get, might be a little bit repetitive or maybe you just didn't even like drawing this VR girl that I, that I made or the hand was too hard, whatever it is. Like be the captain of your own education and use me as like your map, but you're still the captain, right? You, you still got to make sure that you uh, don't crash the, crash the ship. <laughs> I don't know. Um, my metaphors are not always the best. Yeah, I, I hope this gave you guys some clarity uh, and hope it was more inspiring than uh, confusing. I'll see you in the next one.
Bye.